Rest in peace, crab feeder. Early episodes of House of the Dragon built up the cruel and mysterious Kragas Drar as the potential season-defining villain. But in the end, he went just as quickly as he came. But why is that, though? Why has a newly introduced important character, not just some random extra, been written off the show so easily? Fans earlier believed that the third episode of House of the Dragon would include a huge battle based on the episode's promo and the series' concluding scene from episode 2. They were right, as demonstrated by the recent House of the Dragon episode, which featured the troops of Daemon Targaryen and Corlys Velaryon traveling to the Stepstones and making an attempt to halt the Crab Feeder a character that many believe would be more significant to the plot moving ahead and who garnered a lot of excitement from fans during their brief screen time, was killed off in the conflict. Even though the Crab Feeder wasn't a particularly important character in House of the Dragon, viewers were captivated when he first appeared. There was a possibility that he would stick around for a while and oppose the Targaryens. That is obviously not going to happen now. So what do you think is the reason behind this sudden demise? That's what we're going to find out today in this video. But of course, before any of that, make sure first to hit the subscribe button and smash that notification bell for more updates. And watch out for many, many spoilers ahead. Now, here's the shocking reason why Crab Feeder was written off in House of the Dragon. The Crab Feeder was abruptly killed off in Episode 3 of House of the Dragon after making just one significant appearance. Although the Mountain publicly apologized for his crimes against Ila Martell before passing away, the Crab Feeder perished before saying a single word which is surprising for a villain in the universe of Game of Thrones. To top it all off, House of the Dragon omitted to depict the precise moment that he was physically severed in half. The Crab Feeder was first referenced in the first episode of House of the Dragon, when Corlys Velaryon repeatedly brought up issues in the Stepstones to King Viserys. It was discovered that the Crab Feeder was a Myrish prince going by the name of Prince Admiral of the Triarchy, who was in charge of the Free City's allies in their conquest of the Stepstones. When his actions exposed House Velaryon's maritime lanes, and it was discovered that he was feeding the crabs the corpses of Westeriosi sailors, his reputation raised concerns for Westeros. The crab feeder's face was finally revealed at the conclusion of House of the Dragon Episode 2 as Daemon and Corlys chose to wage war in the Stepstones. Although the crab feeder had been positioned as the House of the Dragon's initial major antagonist, Daemon Targaryen murdered him in the same episode that the war was first depicted. After receiving a message from Viserys, Daemon marched into the Crab Feeder's domain, attacked him with a massive army, and killed him there. In order to demonstrate his victory, Daemon leaves the cave with the Crab Feeder's head, chest, and one arm trailing behind him, indicating that he utilized Dark Sister to end the conflict. While the events felt unusually quick for Game of Thrones, the war for the Stepstones had actually been going on for three years. The time jump left only the growth required for Daemon to finally win the war skipping both past the increasing animosities between Daemon and the Crab Feeder and Daemon and Corlys' numerous defeats. The Crab Feeder played just a supporting role in Daemon's character development in House of the Dragon. The Crab Feeder himself was mostly inconsequential. Daemon needed a villain worse than himself that he could kill gloriously in order to prove his worth to his brother and the realm. The Crab Feeder's demise has to occur as soon as possible because the first season of House of the Dragon has a lot of territory to cover in only a few episodes. Why House of the Dragon didn't show Daemon and the Crab Feeder's duel It is strange that House of the Dragon omitted the moment when Daemon sealed his victory, given that the Crab Feeder's overall goal was to showcase Daemon's bravery and victories outside of King's Landing. However, it was far more crucial that House of the Dragon Episode 3 devotes screen time to Daemon risking his life without hesitation by marching straight through flying arrows to meet the Crab Feeder in a duel, rather than Daemon defeating the Crab Feeder to demonstrate his physical prowess in a fight. Similarly to Season 1 of House of the Dragon, this conflict was actually between Daemon and Viserys, rather than Daemon and the Crab Feeder, or really himself. Viserys expected Daemon to demonstrate his independence and merit as a second son by showing them that he could fight and win a battle on his own. It was clear that Daemon would prevail when he pursued the Crab Feeder into the cave after he had already demonstrated his determination to put an immediate end to the fight by rushing through the Stepstone's battleground. The crucial scene to be portrayed on screen was the aftermath, in which Daemon emerges, carrying the Crab Feeder's head to declare victory. This implied how Daemon eliminated the first antagonist of the House of the Dragon and was still quite effective. Meanwhile, House of the Dragon viewers are saying that this surprise death is giving Game of Thrones Season 8 vibes. 
For many who perhaps assumed Crab Feeder was being set up as a major villain in the series, the off-screen demise wasn't a particularly satisfying end for the character. Crab Feeder had a death lamer than the Night King, said one viewer in a reference to the leader of the White Walkers who perished in swift fashion thanks to Arya Stark's Valerian dagger in Game of Thrones' final season. They set up an interesting character with hashtag Crab Feeder, and he gets his tiny parts of three episodes and an off-screen death. Weird decision, wrote one on Twitter. Another commented disappointed with the Crab Feeder death. His presentation so far has been nothing short of stellar, and his design was unique and terrifying. I wish we had more Crab Feeder and Damon scenes, remarked one fan, though another hailed an amazing episode despite being disappointed by Crab Feeder's fate. Others have pointed to the time skip, making a rod for the House of the Dragon's back. To me at least, that makes the whole thing and the moment where Damon finally kills Crab Feeder feel a bit underwhelming, one said. Like, wow, it's already over? Some were more scathing, saying the battle was as ludicrous, lacking any thought toward military strategy as anything from season 8 of hashtag Game of Thrones. But before we go a little further in the series, who exactly, or was, Crab Feeder? Daniel Scott Smith, the actor who plays the Crab Feeder in episode 2 and 3, shares some of the character expansion with EW, including details that may not have been obvious from the screen time he got on the show. He's a nasty character, so as an actor it's a dream, said Scott Smith, who had small roles in Men in Black, International, and Dune, and he said this over Zoom from the UK. It's nice when you have details as well, but it's also nice when it's a completely open book. That gave us the freedom to do what we wanted with the character, which on a creative level was incredible for me, and I think for the directors as well, because we could play with it and build our own version of Crab Feeder, he continued. Fire and Blood tells us that Kragas commanded the armies and fleet of the Triarchy, which was the alliance of the three free cities across the Narrow Sea, Lys, Myr, and Tyrosh. It was under his watch that these forces laid claim to the Stepstones, an important trade route between Westeros and Essos. But he became greedy and demanded high tolls from ships in exchange for safe passage. Sometimes those tolls included human trafficking. Kragas was named Crab Feeder for his unique way of doing away with pirates, staking them in the sand on the beach of the Stepstones and letting the crabs eat away at them when the tides came in. He clarifies that he didn't actually have to eat anything on camera for the audition, but rather... It was very much just ripping things off the bone and that kind of thing, he jokes. I can't imagine Crab Feeder particularly cares about dinner etiquette. A full base casting of Scott's Torso Smiths was taken in 2021. This was utilized to ensure the mask and prosthetics fit perfectly and to sculpt the Crab Feeder's severed torso in the Stepstones battle. Well, that's all for today. We hope you enjoyed that video, and if you did, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button and smash that notification bell for more episodes.